Welcome to the fifth in the series of Force Powers Explained. This time, we are taking a look at the energy-based powers of Star Wars. We've seen many fictional beings use various superpowers comprised of different types of energy to combat their foes, such as Superman's heat vision, or Thor's lightning. In the realm of Star Wars, many of Force sensitives are trained to use various forms of energy, some being rather common, while others hardly ever being witnessed. A great many of these force-based manipulations of energy are typically wielded as offensive powers. The first of which to make its debut when Star Wars was still young is the infamous Force Lightning. Called forth from one's fingertips, Force Lightning is described within the Book of Sith as an embodiment of the caster's wrath. Upon being cast, Force Lightning will discharge powerful blue bolts of energy that cause immense pain, with prolonged exposure having the ability to roast flesh, classify the skeletal structure, as well as sending pain through your organs, potentially causing their functions to cease. Darth Plagueis would achieve something similar to this by physically channeling his dark side energy into the body of an Iktochi dark side prophetess, upon grasping her hands and leaving her body in a spasming heap on the floor. By extension, Force Lightning can often hit targets with such impact that it sends them flying. When Palpatine attempted to shock the Jedi Master Mace Windu, the Revenge of the Sith novel describes the bolts as hitting his lightsaber with such force that they caused Windu's blade to bend backwards. As Force Lightning is essentially electricity, it can be used in virtually any which way regular discharges can. As such, Force Lightning can often be used to overload or trip electrical systems and ignite explosives. The secret apprentice Gayla Mark was noted for doing so several times within the Force Unleashed novelization. This would then be carried over as a game based mechanic into both installments of the video game. However by reverse, the channeling of lightning along his blade that was thought to be but a simple mechanic was actually replicated by his clone, Starkiller, during his fight with the Gorog. Much like a defibrillator, we've seen a use of the Force that seems to resemble lightning used by Count Dooku to keep General Grievous alive upon a crash landing, ultimately saving his life, which was soon after followed by his cybernetic reconstruction. Due to its ability to cause unbearable agony, Force Lightning is often used as a method of torture, intended to interrogate subjects. However, it could not be conjured properly through artificial limbs. As Darth Bane would explain in the Book of Sith, this type of power encompasses those abilities that draw on the living force, and as such, they emanate from your own cells, in order to affect the physical structure of others. This claim is further supported by the Revenge of the Sith Junior novel, on Darth Sidious' discovery of the burnt Darth Vader, noting how his apprentice would never be able to summon lightning, as it required a living hand to be cast, since the force is channeled by life and living tissue. In addition, while this manifestation of the dark side is typically blue in colour, we have seen various instances of Force users wield these bolts of energy in different colours. However, it is not known if this variation of power has any specific correlation to the power of the caster. The Knight Sister leader, Mother Talzin, has been witnessed summoning green bolts of energy against General Grievous' droid armies during the Battle of Dathomir. Jedi Master Plo Koon's variation, Electric Judgment, which we'll get into shortly, has been manifested in a somewhat orange appearance. We've seen artwork of the young and possessed Kip Doron wielding black lightning. An artwork shows Darth Tenorus summoning red bolts of energy. Although, his lightning within the Darth Plagueis novel is actually described as blue, so this particular artwork is inaccurate, at least in contrast to the red bursts produced by the sun on Mortis. While Force Lightning is very devastating in its own right, there are two even more powerful variations that boast both greater potency and greater destructive potential, those being the Force Maelstrom and Force Storm. To further elaborate on the Maelstrom from my first video featuring the power, Palpatine's entry in the Book of Sith directly describes the ability as creating an invulnerable energy sphere to block incoming attacks, whilst bombarding enemies with debris and electrifying them with bolts of lightning. The technique could be further increased through the churning energy mass that is Force Storm, a power so great that it is said to possess the ability to consume everything it touches. Within the Jedi Path, Force Storm's use is described as opening up a wormhole, 
that sends tremendous shockwaves that literally ripple through the fabric of space. Within the Dark Empire comic series, the reborn Palpatine is witnessed using this power to consume fleets of ships, and used it to essentially teleport Luke Skywalker from Coruscant to his location on Biss. The storm was said to have left such devastation on the city planet that it had yet to recover a fall six years later. Due to the ability's potential for abuse, the Jedi Council would classify it as a dark side power, implying that the ability may have been more commonly learned prior to this discovery. As mentioned previously, a variation of Force Lightning is referred to as Electric Judgment, or Emerald Lightning, as labelled in the Jedi Path. This is a use of lightning typically associated with Jedi, rather than a true Darksider. As Darth Plagueis would say of a Jedi's use of lightning, A Jedi sufficiently strong in the Force can be trained to produce a facsimile, but not true Sith Lightning, which unabated has the power not only to incapacitate or kill, but to physically transform the victim. Force lightning requires strength of a sort only a Sith can command because we accept consequence and reject compassion. To do so requires a thirst for power that is not easily satisfied. The Force tries to resist the callings of ravenous spirits. Therefore, it must be broken and made a beast of burden. It must be made to answer to one's will. But the Force cannot be treated deferentially, he added as a few final tendrils sparked from his fingertips. Due to this, a Jedi's use of this power is typically not as powerful as a Sith's true version. As this power is pulled from the light side of the Force, the Jedi Path describes this power's conjuring as stemming from a sense of determined justice, instead of the dark emotions that fuel a Sith's use of lightning, such as anger and hate. Plo Koon's description of when he first used this power also supports this claim. When he used this ability, he would incapacitate the criminal pommel before he could abduct a young girl, yet he was in control of his emotions, and he was not motivated by fear or anything of the sort, nor did he feel motivated to employ a killing blow once the criminal had been incapacitated. Furthermore, this power had the ability to be contained in a ball of kinetic force energy named Kinetite. Darth Vader would exhibit this ability against Luke Skywalker in the Legends continuity, whilst amplified by the Kyber Crystal, a demonstration of power that Luke made note of in one of his many entries in the Jedi Path. While lightning is the most commonly known power for staggering enemies, there is in fact a pair of more pacifistic abilities typically used for a similar purpose. These are referred to as Ionize and Force Stun, both of which have been mistaken to be simple game mechanics in the KOTOR video games, but have both been replicated in other source material. Ionize was a concentrated stream of light side energy used to short circuit droids and other various forms of technology, which could potentially be used to disarm foes of blasters and disable dangerous equipment. The novel Dynasty of Evil makes note of how Darth Bane unleashed an ionic wave so powerful that not only did it absorb the blaster bolts fired by his enemies, but it also completely melted their weapons. Force Stun was intended for a similar use, but was instead intended for use against living enemies. It would deaden the senses in a target, painlessly preventing an enemy's movements, allowing for a less violent manner in which to apprehend them. The strongest use of this power was named as Moricho, a power that was off limits to knights and only practiced by some masters of the Jedi Order, as this would slow the bodily functions of another being to the point where they could be left in a catatonic state. And as such, the risk of an inexperienced user causing the target's heart to stop beating was considered a too high of a risk to use amongst knights. To defend oneself against such an attack is typically named as resist stun. Much like drain resistance, it is likely that such a defensive technique requires a comparable level of power to your opponent, as well as a high degree of willpower, in order to will your power over that of your enemies. Up until this point, I've mostly made note of the effects of energy-based powers that typically affect recipients in ways associated with electricity. However, this is only one of many different elements that can be manipulated. In addition to electricity, a skilled enough force user can use elements such as fire, ice, air, and water. Fire and ice typically had two ways in which to be manipulated. 
the first uses are known as convection and cryokinesis respectively. Convection allows its user to rapidly increase the heat of their hands, to the point where they can inflict blisters on victims and even set robes aflame, and yet no noticeable damage is done to the caster. Darth Sidious would use something similar with the young Darth Maul, heating up a rock in his hands, compelling Maul to yelp and drop the rock. Cryokinesis is used to siphon the essence that leeches life from a living being, leaving behind a corpse shrouded in frost. Despite this, the heat that is siphoned cannot be used to warm the user themselves. Much like Force Lightning, both of these abilities can also be cast in concentrated streams of energy, as depicted in the Book of Sith artwork. The other way to manipulate such elements is named Alter Environment. While not all its applications may seem energy based, it seemed appropriate to me to include them all here. The Jedi Path describes Alter Environment as evidence of the Force's ability to control the natural world, and as such it can allow a Jedi to summon a whirlwind or even a lightning strike, much like the one Kip Duron summoned to defeat a Leviathan, a rather impressive demonstration of power considering the fact that such Leviathans could withstand being engulfed by lava. This manipulation could also be used to summon a dense fog as demonstrated by Plo Koon, or even in a more precise manner such as how Streen would use it to push air into the lungs of Luke Skywalker's students when they were force choked by Exar Kun's spirit. In addition, Alter Environment can be used to direct a hailstorm or crashing waves of an ocean against the walls of an enemy fortification. It is also rumoured that a true master of the ability can call down a pillar of fire, as Anakin Skywalker may note. Given how destruction is a big part of what a lot of energy based powers are for, it is only logical that the power known as Force Destruction will be included here. Named as Combustion, or Flammus Fractor in the Jedi Path, this ability is actually described as a severe culmination of telekinesis, though its use doesn't resemble the basic manipulation of objects. This power is used in such a way that it can cause objects to explode with intense potency. Inquisitor Jeric had such a skill with this ability that not only could he employ it with great levels of destructive potential, but he could also use it directly against his foes in combat, paralyzing them and freezing them in place, as he demonstrated against the Jedi Master Q Ran. Sorcerers and other various dark side adepts have also employed destructive energy through the more unusual methods of the Force. People such as Exar Kun and Alima Kito have both employed forms of dark side energy to blast their enemies. Alima demonstrating the ability to disintegrate people with little training, and Exar Kun using the amulets of Naga Sadao, as well as the dark energies of the tomb they are encased in, to kill a Sith worm upon obtaining the weapons, as well as using such blasts to completely destroy Sadao's spirit. In a similar fashion, Darth Zana would summon tendrils of dark side energy by drawing on the power of a dark side nexus on Umbria. These tendrils were comprised of the purest of dark side energy, and were so powerful that they were completely unaffected by Darth Bane's retaliative efforts with Force Lightning, and instead dismembered his left forearm. While there are a great many ways in which to wield the various forms of energy, one question remains. As said by Savage Opress to Count Dooku, How does one defend against such power? The most common way to defend against the uses of Force Lightning is to absorb the currents with a lightsaber but to use the force as a countermeasure is known as Tutor Minis or energy absorption, as the Jedi Path makes note in the Initiate section of the book. This ability is used to channel or diffuse harmful surges of radiation, with its lowest levels allowing for simple protection against sunlight. The more advanced applications are regarded by the ultimate visual guide as difficult to use, implying a great deal of skill for those who can wield the power. These higher levels include the ability to absorb and deflect blaster bolts, fire, lightning, and other electrical outbursts, as well as the energy of lightsaber blades and electro-staffs. The Jedi Path makes note that Tutor Minis can be used to channel the energy absorbed. To put this in simpler terms, this means that a Force user can use the absorbed energy to increase the power of their own abilities for a short time. People such as Darth Plagueis, Satil Shan, have all been witnessed using Tutor Minis in this fashion. Plagueis used it in the straightforward manner of absorbing blaster fire and channeling it into a bolt of lightning in order to lift Wan Dao off the ground, but it also turned his bones into dust. We see Satil use it to defend herself from a killing strike from Darth Malgus, and channel her energies to unleash a charged blast to blow a hole in the side of the surface which he'd been slammed into, 
consequently causing the rock formation to fall under its own weight once the middle section was destroyed. In conclusion, the extensive quantity of energy manipulation through the force holds for a phenomenal level of combative versatility, but has also many obscure and interesting ways in which a force wielder may benefit from their uses, whether a boost in their own powers, or for a defence against those who typically wield it with a more destructive goal in mind. Much like any force power, the levels of success depend on both the practice and refined control of the abilities, and the power that each respective user possesses. Some force users within the mythos of Star Wars that have displayed a strong grasp on these various forms of manipulating energy include Inquisitor Jeric, the Amnesiac clone Starkiller, the Fanged God the Sun, the Jedi Master of the New Jedi Order Stream, and of course, the culmination of the Rule of Two, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Sidious. Well ladies and gents, thank you once again for joining me in our exploration of Force Powers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section. Next time we shall be taking a look at the stealth based powers of Star Wars, such as Force Cloak. Until then, goodbye, and may the Force be with you.